It's now three years since 5G technology was launched in the UK, but many of us are still using older mobile phone handsets that aren't compatible. And for those who have upgraded, many consumers have been rather underwhelmed after promises of great connectivity and lightning fast speeds. Our technology editor Zoe Kleinman reports. Phones, phones, phones. They're such a constant in most people's lives now. It's difficult to imagine being without them. And coming up to Christmas, a new handset is on lots of lists to Santa. But also on those wish lists, some people might like to add better 5G. Here in Glasgow, people really like their 5G. According to U-Switch, across the country, about one third of us now have a 5G-enabled phone. But here, it's closer to half. However, the same study found that one in six people think the tech behind 5G has been a bit overhyped. I don't think it's great. I don't know what's the difference. I just don't think it's great. No. Like, sometimes if you're texting and that, like, it, it won't go through. Or, like, uh -huh. for example, I was trying to get a hold of my mum, but I couldn't get her. So I was just like, well, I'll just need to wait. Most places are 4G. Yeah. And then the odd places you get 5G, but not very much. When it works well, it's, it's good. When it true, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't. Yeah, but it doesn't work, it doesn't work at all. 3G yeah. barely works sometimes. <laughs> my girlfriend, she's got 5G on her phone, but there doesn't seem to be much of a difference in comparison to my 4G. So if it came to the price was a big difference between 5G and 4G, then I probably would just stay with 4G. Most of the phones are going that way anyway. You know, the latest iPhone comes 5G standard. So yeah, I think I will be going for a 5G. Yeah, definitely. Let me show you what I mean. We've got two phones here. One is running on 5G, one is running on 4G. Now this is really unscientific. They're different phones and they're also on different networks. But what you can see is that actually the 4G is a lot faster in this particular spot than the 5G. Recent research suggests that three years after it launched, a lot of the UK has little or no 5G coverage at all, and it's a similar picture around the world. In that three years, we've had COVID, which did impact on our ability to deploy that network, and the government's own research suggested that cost an additional two billion and added a year's to, to our deployment schedules. This centre at the University of Surrey started working on 5G 10 years ago. This is the team's message to people frustrated with 5G. Just be patient because there are uh, very interesting applications is coming up. They're all gradually become 5G compliant, all of these systems. It's clear that the rollout of 5G has had some problems, not only here in the UK, but also around the world. Mobile networks have got quite a lot of ground to cover before they can bring it to everyone, but they all insist that they're on track. One of the biggest factors driving consumer uncertainty around 5G is price. Like so many things, the cost of living crisis is making us think carefully about what we spend our money on. Although 5G providers don't charge extra money for the service, it can eat up your data at a much faster rate each month. While the telecoms companies are betting on the billions they've ploughed into 5G paying off, they won't be relying on their sales this Christmas to bring it all home just yet. Zoe Kleinman, BBC News.